Today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to connect your Victron controller, such as the Servo GX, to Home Assistant using MQTT. This is great if you want to be able to view and control your Victron devices in Home Assistant. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is set static IP addresses for both Home Assistant and your Servo GX or whatever Victron device you're using. So as you see, I have Home Assistant set to 185 here, and then I have um, Victron set to 180. So the next thing I want to do is we're going to install four things if you don't already have them so we can do this. So we're going to go to add-ons. And the first thing we're going to install is the Mosquito Broker for MQTT. So we're going to install that. So with that installed, I'm going to turn on Start on Boot and Watchdog. And then we're going to configure it. Configuration is pretty simple. The first thing we're going to do is change this Activate to True here and then leave the folder as mosquito. And then I'm just gonna leave all these standard. We also need to save that, and then we also need to uh, add a new user for MQTT. So we're gonna go to Settings, People, and then as you see, there's no User tab up here. So first we gotta go down to here to our person, and we're gonna scroll down, and then we're gonna turn on Advanced Mode. With Advanced Mode on, we can go back to Settings, People, and then now there's a Users tab up here. And we're going to create a new user. I'm going to just call it MQTT user. And I'm just going to leave that as the username also. And then you can make the password whatever you want, but I just always leave it MQTT user also. So now we have our user. And then there's a couple other things we're going to want to install before we start the uh, add-on. We're also going to want to install the file editor add-on. And this doesn't need any um, configuration, you just install it. And then we're also going to want to install the Samba share. And then for configuration on this, we just got to set a username and a password. And then you can just leave it Home Assistant and then just create a password for it. And save that. And we can actually start that one and turn on, I'd turn on the watchdog for it. Then we go back to the add on store and we can also start the file editor and I'll also turn on watchdog, show in sidebar. Okay, so you should now have File Editor installed and started, and Samba Share installed and started. And before we uh, start the MQTT broker, we got a couple other things we got to do. One other thing I recommend you install right now is MQTT Explorer, and that's not installing in Home Assistant. That'll be installed on your computer itself here. So I recommend you install that before going any farther. Now we're actually going to go over to our Servo GX. We're going to do a couple things on there to configure it. So here's mine, I just have it pulled up in the browser right now. And notice how I also have a static IP for it, 180. And that's just what's gonna stay the whole time. So we're gonna go into menu, settings. And then we're gonna go all the way, it's basically to the bottom. We're gonna go to services. And then we're gonna turn on the mod bus, enable it as well as MQTT on LAN, SSL, and plain text. Turn those both on. So now we have those all on, we have MQTT on, so it'll start broadcasting information through MQTT. Okay, so then on our computer, I'm gonna go to File Explorer, and I'm gonna go down to Network, and then I can click on Home Assistant. And if it doesn't bring you straight to this page, that's because you have to enter the credentials uh, we set up in the Samba Share on Home Assistant. So I left the username as Home Assistant, and then whatever that your password is. And that should bring you to this page. Then from there, we're going to want to go into Share. And then this is blank, but we'll want to create a folder. And this folder we're going to want to call the name of our 
uh, MQTT broker. And then inside that folder, we're going to make a new file. So we need to text document. And we're going to name it uh, touch Victron. And then the .txt file, it's going to be a .conf file. Yes, we are sure we want to change it. Inside this file, we're going to add the following configuration that I'll have down below. So you can just paste that in. And it should look like this. And you want to change the IP address to the IP address of your Turbo GX or whatever device you are using. So mine is 192.168.86. And then I set mine to 180. Because remember, that's a static IP address. It shouldn't change. So I set mine to 180. So you're just putting in this address right here. Okay, so we can save that then, and we can close out of it. And now inside our share, we should have our broker folder, and then we should have this. Okay, so we can close out all of that then, and we can go back to Home Assistant. And now we can start the MQTT broker. Okay, so now with our broker started, you can go into the log and make sure that doesn't give any errors or anything. So now that we have that set up, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create an automation. And this will keep alive the connection between Victron and Home Assistant on MQTT. It just keeps that connection going. So to do that, we're going to want to go to Automations. We're going to go and create a new one. The trigger we will use is time pattern, and you're just going to want to type in slash 30 seconds. And what that means is that every 30 seconds, it'll just send this automation and just keep it going. And then for the action, we want to do call service, and then we want to do MQTT. Oh, right. So normally it'll pop up, but we forgot a step. Before we create our automation, we got to actually go back and we got to go to devices and we got to continue um, configuring MQTT. So it doesn't pop up here. You just go add integration, MQTT. Do you want to set this up? Yep, submit. There we go. It created the configuration. So now we can click on it, we can go configure again. You also want to put in this broker and then leave the port and then the this down here actually we're gonna change this is wrong. I'm gonna type in our user that we created for this specifically. Which mine is just MQTT user, MQTT user. And we're gonna go next. And then this can all stay the same. Submit. Okay, so that's all set up. If you've set up MQTT before, you don't even have to do any of this. You know, it should be set up already. So now we can go back to settings and then automations and create our automation. So again, time trigger, or for the trigger, we'll do time pattern every 30 seconds. And then for the action, we can do call service. And now when we type in MQTT, we will have options. And we want MQT publish. The topic you want, I'll have linked down below. So just copy that and you'll just paste it in here. And then your Venus ID is what we need to change. So there's a couple ways to find uh, your Victron ID that we got to put in here. And if you have the Victron Connect app set up and handy, it's actually just your VRM ID. I'm going to show you how to find it in MQT Explorer. So boot up MQTT Explorer on your computer, and then we're going to want to create a new connection. I just call it the Servo GX, and you're going kind to of type in the IP address of your Servo GX. And then port, leave the port, and you don't need a username and password. So you can connect, and that's what this is right here. This is showing our connection to our servo GX 
So we can click on that, we can click on N, and then right here, this 48, that right there is your, that right there is your Venus ID or your Serbo GX ID, whatever you want to call it, but that is the ID we need to put in. So we're going to go back, we're going to copy that, we're going to paste it in here. Remove the end part of it because I copied that also. You should be left with Victron slash R slash your ID slash system slash zero and then slash zero. Serial. Okay, so you should paste that in. It should look like this. And that's all we got to do. We don't got to change anything else. Just leave everything else as it is. So we're going to save that. And I'm just going to call this... Um, Victron MQTT keep alive. Okay, so now that that's all set up, Victron should be communicating locally through MQTT with Home Assistant. So we're going to check that by going back to MQTT Explorer, and we're going to create another MQTT connection, and we're going to call this Home Assistant, and the host is your IP address for Home Assistant. Leave it on port 1883, and then you're going to type in the user credentials you created for MQTT. So that member for mine was MQTT user, and then I just left it MQTT user for password also. So we're going to connect to that. And there we go, we start to see it all pop up. So now you are seeing all the data from the Victron in the Home Assistant um, broker. Okay, so now we get to start adding all the sensors from Victron into Home Assistant. And I'll have the code I used linked down below. And I got my code over on GitHub from this awesome guy right here, so huge shout out to him for having this base code in there. And I'll have his GitHub linked down below if you want more information on setting up um, Victron and Home Assistant and the original code. We're going to go over to File Editor we installed and then we're going to go click up here on this Browse File System and we're going to go to configuration.yaml and you can paste it right in here but I'm actually going to make a separate file because I don't want it all in here. So we're just going to do uh, MQTT include mqtt.yaml. So we're going to hit save and then we're going to go back over to file system and then we're going to go add a new file and we're going to call this mqtt.yaml. So now we can browse to that mqtt.yaml and this is where you'll paste the code I have down in the description below. So you're going to paste that in, and then we can sort of walk through this, and I'll show you what needs to be changed and whatnot. So the things you're going to want to change is your Victron ID, which is what we found earlier, and you're just going to want to paste that in here all the way down. And let's actually go through what this is, for example. So let me show you how this all works. So I pulled up MQTT Explorer, and for example, let's look for AC loads right here. And so this is the sensor that's being created to show our AC loads. So, and you have to be careful because like, for example, I have Venus Home right here because on my other one, it was called Venus Home. But if we look at MQTT Explorer, it's actually called Victron. So we're gonna wanna change that to Victron. So now that matches, because you want to match everything on the MQTT Explorer. So we have Victron and then under that, we're gonna go to N then we're going to go to our ID right here. And then we're going to go down to System, 0, then AC, Consumption, L1, and then it's looking at the power variable. And we can see that's 1,681. And if we go back over here really quick, reload that. It's 1,676, 1,676, 79, 79. See, they match. So that right there, the L1 and then power, 
that value matches our AC loads, just like we want. If we go back over here, that's what we're looking for, AC loads, L1, and then power. So that's how it knows what the AC loads are. Okay, so now that you've gone through and you've changed all these state topics to make sure they match what you want them to match, and it all looks good, we can go down to settings, system, and we're going to restart Home Assistant. With Home Assistant restarted, we can go to Devices and Services, and then MQTT, and now we have 10 entities, and those are all the ones we just created. And if it's working correctly, it should show the it should show stuff. So if it's working correctly, it should show a number now for AC loads. You know, I have 1,341 watts. If it's showing unknown right here instead of that, um, that most likely means that somewhere in here, one of these is wrong. One of these addresses is wrong. So now I have it open in split screen here, and we can look. So AC loads. Look, they match the AC loads, AC loads. That's pretty cool. The battery load, 298. Oh, it changed already. 433. Give it a sec. Three eighty, three eighty, three fifty-seven. This one will change in a sec. Three forty-nine, three forty-nine. So yep, they're all matching. And then you want to make sure, like your temperature sensor, your battery one, that matches correctly. That's one you might actually have to change, because I have my battery sensor hooked up to my uh, Servo GX. But if you have it hooked up to your Smart Shunt, it'll be a different. So if you have it hooked to your smart shunt, uh, it'll be a different state topic. So you might have to do a little digging around to find those. Well, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions or something's not working, drop a comment down below and I'll try and help you troubleshoot that. Also, let me know if you would like part two setting up more sensors and controls. Anyway, if you guys want more videos on Home Assistant or on Victron, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching, you guys.